So, I noticed your two replies to atheism versus Gnosticism, which you took down, and out of curiosity, I uh, went to your website and I saw all those other videos. I did actually watch them. But out of skepticism, I posted the comment asking if you were just stroking my ego. Finally, out of integrity, I'm accepting your admission of guilt and trying to move forward. Now, there will be a few ground rules. Um, for example, my time is rather limited. So I'm going to give you very rough sketches of my ideas, and we'll see where it goes. I don't know if, um, if we'll be able to cover that much ground. But here we go. Um, I noticed most of your questions dealt with very related issues. Um, you ask about what is a definition. And now this is very relevant from the atheism versus agnosticism debate, because um, a lot of people see that as just a slight semantic difference. Um, Remember a quote, Aveling and Darwin. Um, one of them basically said, atheism is, is agnosticism uh, read aggressive. Uh, that they're really largely the same people in both camps. Uh, but to get to the heart of your philosophical question about what a word really is, a word is just a metaphor. It's just a matter of explaining a pattern that applies to the world and um, the, the difference between words really ranges in the difference between metaphors. Um, you had the example of a whale. Um, another common example is a red ball. Um, a whale is a very specific object. Uh, we can map it very well to the individual atoms that comprises the whale. Um, pretty much anybody can recognize a whale. Some more abstract concepts like peace are trickier. Um, we, in fact, use metaphors to describe peace. Uh, we have, for example, a picture of uh, the flower and the gun, which is itself a metaphor. So, really, all words are just metaphors to try and relate experiences. Um, they're, they're patterns that apply to certain things, and there's ambiguity there. And that's really where a lot of the danger comes in. Words can very quickly relate very complex ideas and very large sets of information because of that but they can also be misinterpreted, um, sometimes intentionally. Uh, a lot of people, because words are so ambiguous, cut the connection between the word and reality. Um, I think a lot of fundamentalists, a lot of talking heads, practice this very well. There's no reason why we still should doubt evolution, or frankly global warming, or any of other issues that are resoundingly proven. But we do, because there's still some ambiguity there. Um, intelligent design is a great example that, is it science? Well, there's some ambiguity to what science means, right? But that's, that's one of the costs you incur when you use a communication system that requires um, ambiguity. Um, now, you ask about morality, and morality is the big one, the big ambiguous word. I think it's gotten to the point where scientists really need to start standing up and explaining um, in much better detail what morality is. Morality is just an evolutionary system. Um, you have insects that in many ways live perfect harmony. Uh, they are basically communists to the extreme, ant colonies. You know, they all share everything. Um, they're all there for the common good. Um, some scientists actually have explained this um, on a scale of collectivism, that some animals are very collectivistic and some animals are not. And all of morality comes from the collectivistic side, that we should help each other out. Um, now, because of that, because of that evolutionary backing, we do have a common morality. Morality is, did not just fall out of the heavens. It's not some abstract concept that we invented. We didn't even discover it. It's not, um, it's not the atom or the quark. Um, this is something very specific that we all share. Um, every, every culture in the world has rough laws or rough behavioral rules for not murdering each other, not stealing. You know, the golden rule pops up everywhere. So, morality comes from evolution. Now, one of the problems is, I imagine we're going to have to also talk about how... Um, Morality is just a matter of being able to freely make decisions, and being able to freely make decisions is really a matter of the complexities of the brain. And 
neuroscience is showing us a lot of that too, that the brain is the center house for all of our thoughts. Um, we've had examples stretching back hundreds of years of people getting damaged to specific parts of their brain and it causing specific damage to their thinking processes. Um, changed personalities, lost abilities, lost memories, stuff like that. Um, and we all know chemical effects of drugs. So it's overwhelmingly obvious that the brain is the powerhouse of consciousness. So, um, now that that's out of the way, um, the, a final note about atheism and why I made that video in the first place. Agnosticism, I think, has grown to mean um, uncertainty about God to a degree that there's room for fundamentalists to cut the cord there. In the same way that fundamentalists say we aren't sure about evolution, it's just a theory, fundamentalists can say we aren't sure about God, um, where you guys are agnostics, you aren't sure. And I think that's highly unfair. The word needs to change because of that. The word is not suiting, fitting its purpose anymore. We are sure. I, in particular, am sure there is no God. Um, we've disproven every God so far. Um, any gods we could yet conceive, um, such as Zeno, for example, you know, a Scientologist, uh, made that up just a few decades ago, in the 50s or whatever. He's obviously false. We can disprove him. Um, our brains, for example, are the center houses for our neural systems. That's pretty strong evidence against the fact, against us being aliens. <laughs> so, <sighs> Zeus was disproven. All the gods have been disproven. Um, and the, the real problem is that a true agnostic will not argue with that. They'll say, sure, Zeus doesn't exist, but that's using science. How can we even use science? How can we know that we're here? You know, how can we know the sun's rising? Blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot of agnostic bullshit, I think. Um, because you can use evidence, you can use science. Um, there are, it's a rough sketch of proof, but there are two possible worlds that we could be in, a logical world or an illogical world. And if we are debating, if we're using logic to communicate, then we have to be in a logical world. Otherwise, we cannot, by definition, debate in the first place. So, if we can debate, we're in a logical world. Uh, if we're in an illogical world, this exchange is meaningless anyway. You can't debate, period. So, we're in a logical world, and we're debating. Um, that means that every experience we have has a logical explanation. There is a connection between the experience itself Words are on top of the experience, they're explaining the experience. The experience is connected to the world itself in some direct way, direct logical A leads to B way. That this is an atom, this is its electric force. That, you know, our touching something is the electrons bouncing against each other. Okay, so I think we've covered most of the ground that um, it's a logical world, therefore you can use science. Therefore, um, you can build up these cases against Zeus, against Sinu, and against whether crap you want to skew um, flying spaghetti monster. So, once the facts are built up, then it's just a matter of probability. We don't know everything, obviously, but um, what we do know is more than nothing. And because of that, and what we do know points to there not being any god, then we should say there is no God. Uh, to say agnostic often means you think it in the range of 50-50 or even unknowable. And you know, there's several different definitions for that and you can go up in more complex, strong agnosticism, weak agnosticism, whatever. Strong atheism, weak atheism. Uh, the point is, and I mentioned this in the, in the agnostic versus atheist video, um, a watch, that when you look at your watch, you tell the time to somebody, they're not, you're not going to say, uh, have a big disclaimer at first about how this might not be a watch, it might be an illogical world, um, everything might be a lie, we're in the matrix, blah blah blah, because the probabilities are so low, you just say, it's 420, or whatever. <sighs> Alright, I think I covered it. Uh, gotta get off to some more important things. Guess we'll see where this goes.